Welcome back to New Rockstars. It's me, Tommy B, and we've got fresh new trailer footage for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Coming to theaters August 2nd, 2023. Our heroes in a half shell haven't been on the big screen since 2016. I've missed them, and I personally can't wait to see them make their triumphant return this summer. So grab a slice of pizza and your favorite martial arts weapon, and let's dive into the Mutant Mayhem. But before we do, don't forget to check out nerdriot.shop, where you will always find the latest and greatest in New Rockstars merch. All right, let's hit the sewers. Boys, where have you been? <laughs> we're just running errands. That's it? Oh! Oh, look, we're really sorry, Splinter. Some of the guys wanted to get pizza and I tried to talk them out of it. Leo! You ratted us out. Hey, don't use that word that way. I mean, it's 2023. Sorry, right Dad. <laughs> So the trailer opens with Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael flipping and running all over New York City's rooftops. We get our first look at Splinter, voiced by Jackie Chan. He's asking the boys where they've been in a worried parental tone, and just look at how cute that giant ninja rat is. He's sitting in a leather armchair, but looks like a number one dad mug on a floral TV tray with his classic purple robe, oversized glasses, and white whiskers. He just looks like such a dad. Splinter is daddy. The turtles were lying to him, obviously, and you just know that he's not mad. He's just disappointed. Turns out they were filming themselves on their phones doing cool ninja stunts just like regular teenagers. Shout out to my nephews, always filming stunts. But sweet rule following Leonardo doesn't have the stomach for lies and gives up the ghost. I personally am glad to see Splinter is taking the word rat back. It's about time for all of us rat bastards. Also, the turtles confirmed that this is the year 2023. We love a current timeline. We cut to the green, oozified Paramount and Nickelodeon logos and Can I Kick It by A Tribe Called Quest starts to play as we get a look at the New York City manhole cover leading down the sewers. Now remember, a lot of this was similar from the teaser trailer we got back on March. <laughs> hey guys, if we weren't monsters that were shunned by society and we could do what we wanted, <laughs> what would you guys do? Go to high school? Maybe get a girlfriend? Can you imagine that? Not likely. <laughs> Can I kick it? Yes, we can. Can I kick it? This is insane. Turtle, mutant, karate teens. I want to know everything about you. Our dad is definitely not a giant rat. That makes me feel like he's a rat. The turtles refer themselves as monsters, shunned by society. The official description of this film says, after years of being sheltered from the human world, the Turtle Brothers set out to win the hearts of New Yorkers and be accepted as normal teenagers. Whether that means society has actually shunned them or maybe their pop splinter is just trying to keep them safe, we're gonna have to find out about that. But don't shun those little ninja turtles, come on. Executive producer Seth Rogen has emphasized that one goal of this movie was to make it more than just your typical action film saying, we we found a way to make it deeply personal. It's a teenage movie. We're putting a lot of our own fears of awkwardness and insecurity and a desire to belong and be accepted and all that into the movie. Now I get that. Insecurity, awkwardness, doesn't just stop at teenage years, boys. You can be 38 and be awkward. You guys are up late talking in their bunks. The clock shows that it's 2.54 a.m. Must have been a late night of crime fighting. We get a look at their very messy room. It's among the clutter, there's a planted Hollywood mug, a super soaker on the ground, and a target board hanging on a pipe with a score sheet underneath. We also see Raphael's size stick out from the underwear drawer. Each turtle has some flair in their bunk that shows some of their own personalities. Leonardo has a poster for Secret Ninja Roaring Tiger, a Korean martial arts film from 1982. It was directed by Godfrey Ho, a director from Hong Kong who is believed to have directed around one hundred different films under different names, 80 of those films being made between 1980 and 1990. Now that, my friends, is a quick turnaround. A lot of people ask me how I'm able to stay focused. Researching all these vids, and honestly, it's this. Bang! Mm -mm -mm. I can feel the energy surging. One Shot Energy Chews are a healthy and convenient energy boosting supplement candy for gamers, athletes, YouTube hosts, everybody really, even hunks like me. They make energy chews and focus chews. The focus chews are my go-to, but it just depends on what you need. Each energy chew has 75 milligrams of pure caffeine, plus 600 milligrams of additional nootropics to give you a serious energy boost that works immediately as you chew. Look at me now, I just chewed. I'm practically jumping out of here. Focus Chews, now available and limited edition new Rockstar Steam packaging really helped me concentrate and give me a natural boost of energy with B, C, D, and E vitamins. If there was an F vitamin, they'd have it too. Plus zinc to help with immune system support and the amino acid tyrosine. Both energy chews and focus chews are plant-based, naturally sweetened, and designed to give you the energy and focus you need without a bunch of fillers and chemicals. Get started with One Shot Energy today by going to oneshotenergy.com slash newrockstars for 10% off your order. One Shot. 
Donatello has a globe and stacks of books next to his bed, as well as a model of the space shuttle and a computer monitor with icons on the desktop that are a complete mess. Come on, organize those icons, make them into files. We get a shot of them flying out of the sewer like the opening to one of their many cartoons, and they meet up with April O'Neil to share their exploits. We see them fighting human criminals in a canning factory, underground poker room, pool hall, and noodle restaurant. Always convenient to beat your enemy in a place where you can get a snack after. And finally, we get a shot of some pizza. It looks like the pizza has pepperoni, which makes sense, and also white dots that look like marshmallows. This could be a nod to an episode of the 1987 cartoon where Michelangelo requests this specific pizza, much to Splinter's disgust. Master Splinter, perhaps you'd like to try some pizza. It's marshmallow and pepperoni. Uh. The boys again refer to Splinter as dad, really showing how young these turtles are. They have referred to Splinter as father before in previous iterations of TMNT, like the animated 2003 and 2012 shows and the 2016 movie. But the use of the word dad just makes it feel extra emotional. It also makes them feel extra young. These are teenagers after all. These are baffled by the recent crime wave led by a super fly. Nobody's ever seen his face. Why? Because he kills everyone who does. Whoa. Whoa. Cool. No, not cool. Eh, a bit cool. Can I kick it? We take out super fun, and then everyone will think we're cool. They'll accept us. We get a look at April's investigation board in a dark room tinted with red light. The board reads, who is Superfly? With locations of connected incidents pinned throughout NYC. There are newspaper clippings with one showing a picture of a giraffe and a headline containing the word heist. More on those giraffes in a moment. Another clipping shows a fence that has been busted open. Clearly some crimes involving some animals. There's also something in a biohazard bag, along with a candid photo of a man walking and a list of other potential suspects. The turtles see taking out these criminals as their chance to become heroes and therefore accepted by society. And we see versions of them that look like how we all drew them when we were kids. How do they know that? One of those things where everyone in the world drew them the exact same way. There's a shot of the Manhattan Bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge's less popular cousin, with the NYC skyline in the background, including the Freedom Tower, which means the turtles live in a similar universe as ours. We then meet the mutant brotherhood of this film, led by Superfly, who has a vanity license plate that says Superfly. Bold move as a villain. From left to right, we have Genghis Frog, voiced by Hannibal Burris, Leatherhead by Rose Byrne, Bebop, voiced by Seth Rogen, Superfly, voiced by Ice Cube, Rocksteady, voiced by John Cena, Ray Filet, voiced by Post Malone, and an unconfirmed bug creature that I think is scumbag. He has similar yellow bloodshot eyes, the antennas, the pincers. He's also wearing the remains of a shirt, as he often does in the other Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stories. We have Mondo Gecko, voiced by Paul Rudd, and Wingnut, voiced by What We Do in the Shadows, Natasha Dimitro. We will probably get their origin story as we see tiny little creatures in a test tube with yous, a gecko, a rhino, a warthog. It makes no sense that they're all the same size, but I guess, I don't know, science. There's also a man lurking behind the test tube. Could this be the character Baxter Stockman, confirmed to be voiced by Giancarlo Esposito in this film? In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle lore, he is a scientist that eventually gets mutated into a half-man, half-fly. He might be the person behind the ever-important ooze and all of these mutated creatures. Then we get a shot of this mutant kaiju, and it's awesome to behold. If you look closely, it's made up of a whole mix of animals. It has bug eyes, mandibles, a whole elephant's head with tusks and a trunk where its nose should be, and a giraffe on its face. Remember those missing giraffes from April's board? Well, and that could be it. It also has a whale's mouth, a crab claw for its right hand, and its left hand is made up of three Norwal attached to an arm. It's an amalgamation of animals, plus it's spewing ooze out of its mouth. This thing is nightmare fuel, pure, pure nightmare fuel. The citizens in Times Square are understandably shocked to see it. Among those people in the crowd, there is this painted robot man probably collecting tips from tourists, just like you'd see in our world. It's clear that Superfly and his crew want the mutants to rule the world, as Mondo Gecko says in his European accent, Pampos, they gots the girl. Let's slap in the bass. We get more rooftop running that culminates in a hype Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pose in front of a full moon. And their eyes are fully whitened out with their masks blowing in the wind, very stylized and comic book-esque. And it's possibly even a nod to the cover of the very first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic. Shout out Kevin Eastman and the other guy whose name escapes me. Superfly says, six in the morning, police at my door. This is Ice Cube quoting the Ice T song, six in the morning. Also, there's a device in the van that Superfly clearly wants. We later see Leo falling from this device with some sort of glowing red MacGuffin. The police take on these mutants with some serious tech, like these futuristic light up guns. And what's with the mean looking guy with an eye patch? Is this Casey Jones's origin story? Come on, hockey mask. Casey's nice. He's got to fight with the good guys. Splinter imparts some wisdom on the turtles, calling out their attributes as they wield their iconic weapons. Michelangelo's heart as he spins his nunchucks. Donatello's wisdom as we see the stickers he has on his bow staff. Hey, you want to make sure you know which one's yours. Raphael has bravery 
Avery and his sigh, and of course, Leonardo as his honor and the dual katana. Raphael shares that he dreams about fighting every night, which his brothers appropriately address. We get another look at our mutant kaiju as it kicks a fuel tanker, forcing the turtles to dive out of the way. Are those shells flame retarded? I sure hope so. Then we see them driving what looks like an early version of the turtle van, an iconic toy that every kid wanted. I actually had this toy, and if I'm not mistaken, it, it shot out manhole covers. They've made many versions of it over the years, and I'd head over to eBay if it's uh, tickling your fancy to purchase now. This one seems to be a commandeered pizza delivery van. As Donatello drives, we get the classic Cowabunga! And that's it for this tubular turtle trailer. So Cowabunga, dudes, this movie can't come soon enough. Make sure you follow us here at New Rockstars for all things mutant and mayhem. Tell us why you're excited for this film by adding us on social media. We'll keep you posted as more news drops for these turtle boys. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this in all channels on the new Rockstars Network. I'm partial to the new Breakroom channel, by the way. Until then, let's get the show out of here.